I have an intro of the screenshot of our YouTube channel introduction. I'd like to play the video and have you watch the banner at the bottom. Uh, please don't watch me because that's not the focus. So we'll go ahead and watch it without the sound. And you can see I have a crawl running underneath the title coming out from the middle somewhat like you see sometimes on a news broadcast. I'd like to show you how to create a banner like that, at least the key steps involved. I was to able to create this banner in Photoshop Elements version 11. And as you look on the screen, I'm in expert mode, and this is the final version of the banner as it's fully assembled. But now I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. The first step was to take an, an image and create four different colored sections. You see the area at the top, the white area below, the little gray area in the middle, and the green area to the right. Now the colors don't matter. In the expert mode, each of these is actually a, uh, a layer in my Photoshop elements. So I tried to design what will my banner look like, what will be the different components I'm going to have, and how do I go ahead and structure it. So this gives you a little bit of the size you can calculate of these four components. And then what I did was I took each of those four components in size and worked on them independently in Photoshop Elements. Once you have your elements designed, you open a new file, which is the size of your banner. Mine happens to be 1280 by 76. And then I'm going to place three of the four files. The first file I will place, I'll go File and click on Place. And then I'll take my blue right area, click it, and this becomes the area I put over here and I'll save that. Then I'll click my file place again and scroll down to my vertical small bar and place that. And that fellow goes over here. And I'll click OK. And then the third thing I do is I go file place the third time. And I finally locate it so I locked it in here and I will place it right about there. Now the reason I'm not placing something in the bottom will c become apparent later because that's going to be on a different layer in my photo image. The one thing I have left to place is my icon. So I'll go ahead and go file place one more time. And I'll go to my icon. Click here. We'll place it and I'll take it and move it over here. There we go. So now I have this area all ready. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and <clears throat> use this in my power director. Let me show you how to do that. Once you have your components assembled for your lower third, then you need to import the assembled product into the video editing software that you use. I'm a user of PowerDirector, so let me show you how I do that with PowerDirector. I'm going to right click in the upper left quadrant and I'm going to say import media files. I will import my TV lower third large and then I'll take another one. I'll right click on import another one. This one is going to be called my lower white. And I'll import that. So now I need to put these on the various timeline tracks. Now remember the farther down on the timeline the more it, it, it will overlay what's beneath it or above it in terms of my numbers of my tracks. So I'm going to take my TV lower third large I'm going to drag it down into my track number two. Well, let me drag it down to three. I want it in my third track. 
Okay, it's down here and then we will reposition it. We'll move it to the bottom of that particular area down right here. Should fit just perfectly. There we go. Because we're set to a 16 by 9 ratio here. And this looks pretty good. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to take my lower third white and I will drag it down to track number one. No, let's put it in track number two. No, no, I want it in one, I'm sorry. And we'll drag it and stretch it. Now we're going to take this and we're going to move it down into this space here. And so I will happen to stretch this a little bit. So now it covers that area. But you see, because my lower third large is in a lower track, it obscures the white area over here. And I'll show you in a minute why I did that. So there I have my lower third assembled. Now the next thing I need to do is to add some text. And I will drag my default text down <coughs> below level number three. And so I'm going to take it and drag it here. We'll take my title, we're going to change where the text appears. I will shrink that down so we can see what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to make this white. And we'll change the font. And we'll change the size probably to maybe 14. And the location, we'll drag it down here to our blue bar and change the words. <coughs> so it says, this is the main title of my lower third. Okay, and now we have it. So I'm going to click on Save. When I reposition the screen so I can see the bottom part, I will go ahead and play my clip. And there's no motion, but I get to see my title here of my lower third in this upper part. The tricky thing will be now I want a text in black to appear over here and appear to come from behind the blue area on the right. So we're going to go back to our uh, text tools and click <clears throat> on the default. We'll drag it down again. Now I don't have a place to put it. So what I need to do is I need to create another, um, another track. So I'll right click, do add tracks. And this track we are going to put in front of track number three. So I'm going to put it um, above track three. And again, I don't need an audio track. So now I have another track above track three. I'm going to take this lower third and move it up one. And now we're going to put something in this track. So I take my text tool and drag it down again. And then we'll go ahead and edit this. I will drag it down and we'll turn this color to black. Again, we'll change the font to something that seems to fit there. Um, let's try this one here. We'll have to shrink this down probably to something like a 12. Let's try that one. And we'll reposition it a little bit here. Nudge it up with the keyboard. We'll stretch it. Oh, 
and all that. I'll just add to it later. Okay, and now we'll say, change it to, this is a great number of, of words to illustrate a point. And I misspelled illustrate, but that's okay for now. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and save that. We'll drag our preview window down. And this is what we have. Now, what we want to do now is we want to make this, this crawl out from behind the blue block. How do we make that happen? Our next step is to click on the text in the white area. This is a great number of words to illustrate a point. So I'll double click on that. Then I'll go to my motion settings. And I want the motions that talk about sliding left. So we see it illustrated here, sliding left. And then I'll click on save. And now I've saved it. So if I start to run this, let's see what happens. It's working just like I want to, except note what's happening. It is putting the numbers start in front of this area. I want them to appear as though they're starting behind. What do I do to change that? It's all about the location of the layers. What I need to do is make sure that these words are not in front of this area. So I'm going to take them and drag, move them up to track number two. Let's see what happens now when I have, I have them sandwiched between the lower white, which has to be behind them, and the lower third large, the blue area, which has to be in front of them. Now let's see what happens when we play the same clip. Now as the clip moves forward, it looks like the black letters in the white area are coming from behind the box on the right. But this is a simple illustration of how to make the basic construction of this particular kind of a lower third using a software like Photoshop or Photoshop Elements for the basic component construction and PowerDirector to finish the project.